Okay, so we're going to talk uh, for 30 minutes about the, the way people can uh, write and execute Python macros uh, within LibreOffice. So if I make a short story of myself, I've been using uh, LibreOffice since version 5. By that time, I was trying to explore the, the base part uh, of the suite. So I went uh, using uh, BASIC, uh, suffered some personal frustration with BASIC. And from there, I went exploring uh, Python, which happens to be available uh, in LibreOffice from the uh, early ages of uh, OpenOffice. So let's see. This is what, what we're going to discuss. I'm, uh, I'll make a brief uh, recap on the scripting framework ability, Ex explain the interest of using Python next to BASIC, or instead of BASIC, the way you want. Uh, I'll be uh, going through uh, three uh, exemplary uh, IDEs, Integrated Development Environment, which happen to be the simpler ones. I don't want to go into uh, high-tech ones like Eclipse or whatever. The, the purpose being to expose in an easy fashion Python programming to ca casual uh, individuals. Uh, I'll be mentioning some extensions that facilitate this uh, this writing and, uh, and running. The way some, uh, some of these, these three IDEs can be set up, and then if time permits, we'll go through the existing resources and some examples. And eventually, if you, I've, got, I've got a quiz for all of you, and those that may come afterwards. If you manage to find where I picked up the avatar from, I offer you champagne. But to the first one who finds. OK. The uh, scripting framework, you may all know that the macro, standard macro programmer is, uh, is being proposed uh, Python uh, and BASIC next to Bean Shell and JavaScript. It happens that Bean Shell and JavaScript are seldomly, if not used at all. So I'll be discussing uh, Python in that very case. People can naturally also use C++, Java uh, next to that, but, uh, but that's not the purpose of the presentation since the target is still the uh, humble user for macro scripting. So to start with, uh, why, Python, why Python? We'll go through that. Huh? Well, by the time you start using Python, you, you get multiple features which, uh, which resemble the, the ones that the basic IDE in LibreOffice is offering, but you, get, but you can get much more. So you, you get things which are similar to, to BASIC. You get the source explorer. You can get syntax highlighting, code completion. You get debugging. You get uh, next to that the coding guidelines from the Python uh, enhancements proposals. So whichever, depending on the ID you have, uh, you can get guidances, which is important for people which would be new to Python. You can get test-driven development. And version control, and I don't even detail. There are other stuff in there. I'll have to go through the extension uh, after that, and, uh, and I'll also de uh, detail a bit of the setup of the, the IDEs. Uh, the, I do mention IDE utils, but I, I won't have time to, to detail that. It's a piece of, uh, of, of code I've put in GitLab, which is facilitating the uh, usage or the, code, the debugging of macros, uh, depending on the IDE you use. So by the time you, you run LibreOffice, uh, most distribution include the Python scripting framework. Some of them do not. And in that case, uh, you may not even have the Python console, console. But what's interesting to note is that from the very moment you get the scripting framework for Python installed with, uh, within LibreOffice, for every object, you, you would be using, you start, you, you're being uh, provided with a minimal description of every object existing inside the API. So why, that's the list of ID I'll, I'll be going through and uh, demonstrating in the, during the presentation. And the reason why I selected these three are the following. I'm looking for free software, 
open source software, and possibly multilingual software. And you, you get some of the reasons. These three are mentioned there. And they have to be multi-platform, hopefully, as well. So. PyCharm is mentioned, although it's not uh, open source, because it's free. And uh, uh, compared to the other, it's really powerful. You may see that from the screen capture I'll be uh, going through. Next to that, there are other IDEs you can, uh, you can benefit from, which I mentioned there, but I, I won't go through, the, through their use. Okay, that's the, but as a standard, Python is providing a, a minimal development and writing environment, which is idle. And so I'm, I'm simply showing the class browser and syntax as highlighting as it's existing in idle, but uh, which is interesting to, to show to everyone, although it's not permitting to use the LibreOffice uh, Python UNO bridge. It, it doesn't support it by default. And, and reversely, if you use LibreOffice, you won't be able to use idle. So, but it's still a good source to start exploring the language and getting started with Python if, you, if need be. Genie, that, that's, uh, as the title says, you get the uh, document, or, uh, a document browser and symbols uh, on the left, as well as you get uh, syntax highlighting uh, and code folding available with that ID. PyCharm is doing something similar. It's providing much more uh, explorers, but the, uh, the layout is uh, almost the same. It's, it's much nicer in, uh, in, in, in many cases. I mean, one, one thing we're noticing is that the, back, the background uh, Python environment for PyCharm is PyDev, which happens to be provided also in Eclipse. Genie, that's the one I use most often because I went exploring Python using Idle, using PyCharm, and PyCharm was a good source for, for experimenting and getting used to Python, and in most cases, I know a lot of Python programmers that turn back to very simple environments, which in most situations fits. So here's code completion within PyCharm. So if it's blurred, uh, excuse me. No, that's debugging from PyZo. I hope I pronounced, I don't know the developer, so I, maybe I mispronounced the name. That, that's a nice tool which is offering debugger, and it's also uh, uh, proposing uh, an extension which is not there, which is doing some uh, apparent, uh, apparently some uh, UNO object exploration. You can see from that uh, screen capture that you get uh, typing a uh, code completion, that you get the call stack, which may appear by the time you, you run a script and, and try to identify what's happening to your code, and lots of, lots of features. What did I say? Yeah, that's by charm. So I've tried to capture uh, for, from these tools uh, something that shows the, uh, the code, the, uh, the situation within the, exec the, the execution, and the states of the variables. Uh, Something I won't be, I, I, did, I will mention briefly is the possibility to run unit tests. So it's nothing uh, extraordinary, but it's, it's something I just wanted to, to mention there so that uh, people get, get to know it's existing and that can be used in Genie, in PyCharm, and I haven't tried in PyZo. Ah. The Guide, coding guidelines is exclusively available when you, when you use that um, PyCharm, uh, one of those three tools I'm covering. So you can see, that, so I've been a little uh, naughty in that very example since I've been selecting one of the LibreOffice scripts 
and asking the IDE some of the errors or lack of a coding convention the, that source code is exposing. So you can see from the very rightmost part of the, of the screen, the little colors, they highlight that there are many places where things could notably be improved in terms of presentation, but still it's, uh, it's a matter of a personal uh, sense. You may, you may still think that you don't need to do that. But according to agreed standards, there, there could be things that, that may be improved. So still, I mean, the purpose is not to point at uh, LibreOffice source code, but to show that it's existing and, and that it's also an excellent uh, guidance source, especially for newcomers. Within PyCharm, there is versioning, so you can, I think you can integrate GitHub, you can integrate Mercurial and uh, other tools. Uh, the, the example I selected is, uh, is none of these two. It's simply uh, the same source code I've tagged uh, at various uh, times during the development, and I did a request from PyCharm to show me the changes that have been performed be between those two labels. So that's what should provide some interest. I've, I've went, uh, I, did went, uh, I did go through the uh, various possibilities that Python scripting is offering, and, but to, if, in order to get that, I mean, you, and people may have, got, may have been using that for years, but not necessarily uh, exposing that to the public uh, as I'm currently doing. What, what is existing now for two years is, uh, is an extra extension which is called APSO or APSO or EPSO, which stands for Alternative Python Script Organizer. And since at the very moment you install that within LibreOffice, you can start writing a Python script within the LibreOffice suite, which didn't used to be the case for eight years. And that, the guy who wrote that was inspired by a Japanese code which was present in the OpenOffice forum uh, since two, 2014, and it was done uh, two years ago. It was adapted as an extension. And by the time this is present, I, I, may, I, may go through, I will go through some screen capture of that extension. It, it does integrate, by, uh, as a standard, the support of X-Ray, which may be known to some of you, some, some who have programmed in uh, LibreOffice Basic, and MRI, which happens to be another uh, object inspector written in Python. It's, it's, it can use any of these, uh, depending on uh, if one or the other is installed on your machine. What was the situation before that extension? You, you can see that on the top left of the screen. The, uh, when you select Python macros from, from LibreOffice, from Tools Macro menu, you get the only possibility you get for uh, Python is to say, okay, I can get a list, and apart, apart from that, I could go to some other menu and run the, the Python script which are delivered with, as examples within the product. By the time you install Abso, you, and you run it from the tools macro menu with tools macro, organized Python scripts. You, you get the menu which is uh, on the right, rightmost portion of the screen, which is enabling various things depending on what you select at some moment. You can create libraries, you can create modules. Libraries or uh, so to speak, Python mod modules uh, or directories, I should say. Uh, modules, they stand for uh, libraries, and macros, they, they, they match to uh, functions within a Python module. And according to what you select, you can create, you can create uh, libraries, sub-libraries, or directories, sub-directories. You can, you can create modules, you can edit the content of uh, Python. And what, what the, uh, the extension will do, it will run the ID of your choice. By the time you you can select one or several IDs, but what I generally do, I, I stand for the uh, OS uh, file association. I don't even specify which precise ID I should be using. I, I leave it up to my OS settings. The, 
So this one will provide very humble uh, debugging facilities, which I, uh, I'll illustrate. And it's also, uh, it also enables the running of a Python shell for people to try to identify the exact uh, syntax of an object. And they don't, you don't necessarily need to go in the API. If you start being a bit familiar with the API and the organization of the API, you may generally try to instantiate something and see its content. And you don't, you don't have to, to go to the online documentation or your SDK. That's the uh, console as, a, as made available uh, from the extension. So you will notice that uh, as any uh, interactive console, you can type some Python code, you get the result, you can move further, uh, type another instruction, and uh, explore further the content of the objects you, you, you created, and, it, and possibly the functions and properties it contains. You may also notice that if you want to dig, uh, dig a bit further, uh, you won't get anything. <laughs> So you, you strictly get a minimal uh, illustration of the object, but you don't get any precise information on, uh, on some methods or whichever properties you may, you may try to identify. But still, it's something I use. And that's the uh, debugger, which is proposed by the extension. So uh, I still call it a debugger. Although you cannot set breakpoints, but you get a pretty basic uh, functionality where, whereby you go step by step within your uh, script. You can skip a function, you can skip a module, and, if, um, and it would do it. And next to that, it would show you the uh, call stack, it would show you the object content. And if you happen to click on any of the objects, it would activate X-ray or MRI and you would get much more information. ID project setup. So let's go through these three ones. Genie, so here is an example uh, on a Mac machine or, or under Windows. What Genie, and, and what's important here is, is to notice the S in the title. For every of these three products, you can check, you can set as many uh, Python environments as you would do. You don't need to play around with uh, various uh, virtual environment settings. You just mention one, two, or three uh, different projects. You point to the right uh, interpreter, which could be uh, version 5 which, uh, of LibreOffice, which could be OpenOffice, which could be uh, the very latest, the, some uh, portable application on your machine and you would get various uh, different environments set up uh, from this ID. But the, the three of them are providing that, and it's, it's quite clever and very easy to use. That's for Paizo. Paizo is also proposing a menu which, which is called Shell Configurations, and where, whereby you would get a, something similar. And it's up to you to say, or instead of a Python as a name, uh, that it's your uh, LibreOffice uh, v5.2, or uh, LibreOffice uh, v6.4 uh, that, uh, that you want to have a, a look at and see if your uh, piece of uh, script is, uh, is running properly. Same thing for PyCharm. PyCharm is, uh, is proposing something extra. It's, uh, it's got a default Python setup, and it's, got, and it's proposing a, a Python setup for every project you define within the tool. The, um, the author of Access to Base has, re has recently uh, modified this, uh, the basic library in order to, perm to permit uh, uh, Python access through the various uh, functionalities which are available. So, and, and he's been playing, uh, he's, he's been able to play, to debug and Python and basic all together during that process. Scripting Python macros. That's probably what is interesting you, but it's most certainly something where I won't go in details. So I can go through the resources that exist. 
some of the programming basics. And what I've been doing in the, in the past months is providing within the online help uh, minimal information for people to get started in Python. Python, if I say Python, Python, please forgive me. So that's the, uh, the online help or local help, depending on the way you install it, and uh, the, the content of uh, what it does for Python. So it's, it's showing that it details that you don't get what you get using the basic IDE, but uh, the fact that you use something which is external, you get much more. So uh, the, the various ways to set up the IDEs I went through, but there are details, or at least there are links from that page to the wiki, which is containing more. So maybe I can show the wiki in there. Yeah, that's the wiki page which is linked, and that one is containing uh, quite a lot of information regarding uh, what can be done, some of the uh, in, uh, documentation which are existing, and even if some of them look old, I mean, the, uh, I mean you, you can refer to the Python uh, organization for anything that relates to Python, and the API, we all know that they don't change that much. They are quite stable. So anything that relates to any other language uh, within that list would still be valid. So I went through that. Uh, so I did, I, did, uh, I did provide you uh, an example of the online help. The API the SDK, I would imagine that all of you know where it is. And in case people don't know, that will be linked within the presentation. I do mention uh, the uh, interactive console as a source of information, because from my point of view, it's handy, and you don't, need, you don't always need to go uh, exploring deeper uh, whichever page on the wiki or the SDK, whichever content in the SDK. Forum are a good source. There, there isn't that much information uh, in Python uh, in the Ask uh, site, but uh, it happens to be the case that the still live uh, Open Office Forum is containing quite a bunch of uh, valid and per uh, pertinent information regarding Python. Programming Python scripts. I can go quickly through these ones, but the principle, uh, the principle is that by the time you create a Python uh, module, it's considered an autonomous piece of code. So anything you do in that, uh, in that module can be executed by the time you run your script. And if you want to create things which are more elaborated, such as having a shared library, uh, you won't be using the uh, default context which is provided uh, within LibreOffice, but instead you'll, you'll be importing uh, the UNO library and uh, processing things a bit differently. The help page, uh, somewhere about here. That process is described here. You, uh, if, you have, if you have an autonomous module, which you'll be using in a, uh, for precise circumstances, you'll be resorting to XScript context, which happened not to be the interface in that very case, but an object. And, uh, and it, uh, you will, you'll be relying on the three uh, methods which are shown here. The uh, hello world and capitalize uh, script example within the suite are using that uh, principle. Whereby, if you write something which you intend to reuse, or which could, which could also be a standalone module, you can, uh, you can, there is an alternative which is to resort to the, uh, to the UNO module. And that very module is containing these methods. Next to that, I'm providing some of the minimal translation from what's existing to in basic to what should be done uh, in uh, using Python. And I'm also showing here the, the way you, you would, you'd be calling a, a shared module within your uh, script library. 
And thanks to the new help system that Olivier put in place one year ago, you get a, a nice layout of source code, be it in Python or, or basic. So that's more or less the structure of the uh, existing page on the help. I do provide uh, the example of input-output to the screen because the standard uh, Python output, which would be the console, would make no sense in the context of uh, writing a Python script whereby people ex are probably expecting some uh, user uh, interaction. So what this one is doing is that page uh, input-output to screen is uh, simply defining uh, three, three functions which are called message box, print, and input box. And these three functions happen to call basic in the background using the uh, scripting framework and using cross-scripting uh, ability which is existing uh, in LibreOffice. So I do provide a session information example, the way to identify the operating system. And I do pro for all these situations, I, I do provide the example in either language, be, be they basic or Python. And I'm detailing further the principle of, uh, of, the import, uh, of importing Python module because depending on the fact that your modules are either stored on your machine or, or part of the application or stored within a document, the importation needs to be coded a bit differently. But still, I mean, you, you can import and you would, uh, you would release anything you have imported. So next to that in the help, there are also examples of listeners, of, dial of the ways to open and close dialogues. And uh, I, do provide, I do provide the example of, uh, of monitoring a document events, which I'll show you. And, and I think after that, I'll probably be done. So what this one is doing, I'll show you, and then we'll go through it. Yes, I'm not afraid in that case. Okay, what, what's happening here in the background is that instead of calling a uh, 100 uh, listeners with, within the code, I'm, I'm calling a single uh, class which is, uh, from the very moment it's instantiated, is, uh, is ready to capture uh, all document events within uh, within the, that calc document. So as you may, may, sorry, I will enlarge it. Yeah. So uh, that dialog box doesn't need to be there, but it's just there. Uh, yeah. It's just for the purpose of the demonstration. So let's, let's do what, the, what I've put in the, uh, in the cells. If I set the document, you can see that if all, the, all the events that the uh, application uh, went through. I'll go through the I'll go editing a macro, or pretend to uh, pretend I'm doing. So you can see the extra menu, which is there. Uh, let's just edit something which is basic. OK, I've done that. Let enter. That doesn't matter. I did run. Sorry for that. Macro. Organize basic. Okay, I simply close it. So you, you can see that two extra events went through. Events went through, uh, which are uh, focus and unfocus, or things like that. Not only two, that, by the way. Uh, just cancel. And now if I really save the, the, the document, oh, no, I don't need to. Yeah, let's go through that. I'll close it. Extra, extra events are captured. I don't need to save in that case. The document has been closed. The viewer has disappeared. But what I did in the background as well is that I went uh, using... Uh, the trace console, which is part of uh, the access to base, uh, basic library. Uh, meanwhile, at the very moment that the document was, open, was opened, I start uh, 
I started to set the minimal trace level to debug, and for every debug instruction which were part of the Python code, I went storing the, the event within that dialog box using BASIC through Python, or py using Python through BASIC, and uh, the document is dead, and that's the memory of what happened. So that can be done in BASIC, but it's something I've been doing in Python, resorting to services existing in access to base module. So I'll go. For those interested, we can go through, we can examine the code, but we, we don't have the time. So what's interesting here to, to summarize is that you can call BASIC. There are very little use cases which justify that. I showed you once, but certainly not message box and input box. They're just here to facilitate the, the development, but they have re no real serious purpose in, uh, in, in, the, in perspective of Python, where similar things can be done in native Python using LibreOffice API. However, there are, there are existing things in, in BASIC which are worth the knowing and which can be used uh, safely and uh, in, a, in an instrument, from my point of view, in a fashion which is interesting. Huh? The debug console I just demonstrated is an example. Reversely, it, may, it is interesting to resort to BASIC to Python calls because you get the, the fantastic ecosystem of Python, which is present in LibreOffice, and which can be used by any basic coders. Similarly, a basic coder could be using the 500 functions which are existing in Calc, and it's something I would also recommend to a Python coder. Uh, I, I made an example of a, Python, uh, a basic to Python call, which I called python.os.filelengths, because in the case of that uh, very basic function, the result is limited to two gigabytes. And we all happen to have files now, nowadays on our PC which are bigger than that. So if you use the basic function, it would, give, it would provide you uh, strange results. In most cases, they would be good, but for every file over uh, that, that size, it, it wouldn't work. Uh, whereby, if you call a Python function, you, you get a proper... Uh, a proper result. And the API, by the way, is also returning a limit, uh, a file length of two, two gigabytes at the moment, which is why I did that. To, en to end up, you can also perform Python or basic code to any JavaScript library or module you may have written. So that's to summarize, okay. To hear. The, that, that's the ending page of, the, uh, of some of the links you, you may be interested to have a look at. Thank you.